chartered clinical psychologist from England, um, Manchester in particular. My parents are from Jamaica and they emigrated to England in the 1950s, 1960s. I qualified 16 years ago as a clinical psychologist and I've specialised in intellectual disabilities and in um, forensics and I'm here to attend the Association of Black Psychologists, their uh, annual convention and I've been blown away by this, um, this gallery of African Cuban art and it's been a really nice introduction to Houston and the ways in which blackness has been affirmed in the Houston community. Okay, and so talk a little bit about some of the things that you've seen over the years in your practice. Well, what I've seen is a lot of the issues that are affecting black people in England are the same affecting black people in America and in other countries. We're overrepresented in all the wrong places and underrepresented in all the right places. So um, black people are often um, given the worst housing, the worst environments in which to thrive in. Um, um, they experience the effects of a white supremacy system in the workplace, in schools, mental health systems. Black people are overrepresented and more likely to get physical um, treatments as opposed to talking therapies. So um, um, the situation, um, it could be better for us, but there is recovery. The Association of Black Psychologists have got some signature programs such as emotional emancipation circles and um, black psychology and African center psychology and there are a growing number of us who are practicing from that approach and getting good results with clients. And so in the United States we often hear um, um, sociologists and psychologists and social scientists talk about um, the experience of, of, of Jim Crow and slavery and the modern civil rights movement. Talk a little bit about um, what happened in England mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, racism, um, etc. Well, in England, um, what we had was uh, um, co colonization and enslavement. So my parents are from Jamaica. Um, so that was the, um, they were enslaved and also colonized. So that's kind of like, um, you know, trying to say that, you know, black people aren't sensible enough to even run their own country. And they've got that sort of trauma, yeah, that is still within the black community and passed on from generation to generation. And also trying to be white for social approval and trying to get on and people denying their blackness and really denying the type of strength that will keep them going. And black people sometimes they try and do everything to be accepted by white people, then find out that they can't be accepted and then some of the mental health problems come as a point of realising, oh I've done everything to try and fit in and I still don't fit in. So it's, it's still affecting black people and there was a colour bar um, in England as well. So uh, in America, um, with the Jim Crow, it was very obvious to know where you were accepted, where you weren't accepted. In England, they'd, they'd let you feel that you could be part of the system, and then there'd be a way that, oh, by the way, you didn't quite make it, or oh, by the way, you know, you haven't got the qualifications. But they were never going to really let you in anyway. And so in terms of um, articulating the black pathology, what about in terms of the psycho, psycho, sociolog, psycho sociological impact in terms of from the white perspective in the white pathology? Oh. <laughs> It's quite an interesting question because um, I often say to people that there are enough people studying white people that I don't really need to put my energies there. So I put my energies into studying black people and how the environment affects us, how the environment affects our concept of who we are and what we are and how it kind of mentally enslaves us and, and holds us back today. And yes, there's a system of white supremacy, but there's things that we can do such as developing our own businesses, supporting the black community, developing um, uh, psychological approaches by us, for us. Um, and I feel that way, if you've got your own system going on, um, the mainstream system will want to then kind of provide for you because they don't want to then fund your alternative system, if that makes sense.